welcome to Ecoholics. Today I've got a very interesting macroeconomics term for you and that is propensity to consume. This terminology is very important from the perspective of objective type examinations like either UGC net or MAN trends or different types of economics related objective type types of examinations where you require these small concepts. So let's understand today propensity to consume. Propensity to consume basically is the amount of income of an individual which is spent on consumption, consumption of goods and services. So basically what do we mean? We mean that if an individual earns a certain amount of income, the amount or the proportion of income that has been spent on goods and services instead of saving it, that denotes the propensity to consume. Now, it doesn't end here. Propensity to consume actually came to be a terminology when we started learning Keynesian economics, right? And post that, the different terms related to propensity to consume also have got really famous. Now, what are those terms and what are those calculations? Let's understand that as well. So in propensity to consume, we have the first term that is average propensity to consume, that is APC. Now what exactly is average propensity to consume? It's a huge long term, but it's a very simple term. So what do they mean is, this is the amount or proportion of the income that has been spent on goods and services, but because there is average written over here, so this is the proportion of disposable income that has been spent on consumption out of the total income of an individual, right? So how do we write it? We say that APC is equal to the consumption which means that the part of the disposable income that has been uh, gone into consumption divided by total income c upon y okay now to understand it further let's take a quick example let's say hypothetically you earn 40000 rupees a month okay so let's say that y is equal to 40000 rupees a month this is a monthly income now from this amount of money, let's say you are living out, uh, outside of your own city, you are living out of town, so probably you have to spend on some rent or electricity, expenditures, uh, grocery, etc, 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 okay? So let's say your all of that expenditure, let's say house expenditure, house expenditure is about 25,000 rupees, okay? and um, or let's say it's 20,000 rupees okay and 10,000 more you spend on your daily routine uh, let's say travel and uh, some kind of shopping or some kind of daily expenditure so on a month some miscellaneous expenditure is 10,000 okay and the rest remaining amount is something that you save on a monthly basis. Now, what is the total amount that you have spent in a month? It is 30,000. 30,000 rupees you have spent on different goods and services. Correct? So, now, if we just look at that consumption part and we say C is equal to 30,000. So, now, what will be APC? APC will be C upon Y, which means 30,000 upon 40,000. And what it is? It is 0 0.75 or 75%. So technically what you can say is that out of your monthly income, 75% of it is used for consumption of goods and services, right? So what is your average propensity to consume? It is 75%. 75% of your total income is consumed in consuming or is utilized in consuming different goods and services. That is what is average propensity to consume. Now let's move further and let's understand another terms very closely related to, uh, related to it, which is 
the marginal propensity to consume also called as MPC. Okay. Now, what exactly is marginal propensity to consume? We have this marginal word and usually in economics, we use this word when there is a certain amount of addition into something. So, let's understand what exactly is this, this uh, addition all about. When we say marginal propensity to consume, it means that the consumption has taken place, but the additional consumption of an individual from the additional income that that individual has earned, that becomes the marginal propensity to consume. Meaning that what is MPC? MPC is the change in consumption or addition that has been made in the consumption due to an addition that, ha that was made in the income. Now, what does this actually mean? Let's take the same example. You were earning monthly your income or Y1 original income was how much? It was 40,000 rupees. Correct? Now, let's say that the, there was a raise that was given to you uh, in a month. And after that, your salary has been incremented to 45,000. So, your salary now, monthly income now is how much? 45,000 rupees. What is the addition that has been there in the income? The change in income is 5,000 Okay, now because you earn now some extra money, of course, there are going to be certain extra expenditures. Every human being, whether an, a human being in economics is considered to be a rational consumer, still when the income increases, it's a psychological law of consumption that the consumption also will increase according to the change in income. The savings are not going to increase much, but consumption will definitely increase. So, now... You were consuming initially, your C1 was how much? It was 30,000 a month. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's say that now because you have a leverage of 5,000 extra income, your consumption, of course, it will, it will not be a lot. It will not be total 5,000, but it can be a little more. Okay. So, your C2 can be 32,000. Okay. Which means the change in consumption is how much? 2,000 rupees. For the extra 5,000 that you're earning, you're spending extra 2,000. And that's what is marginal propensity to consume. How much extra you are spending because of the addition or the extra amount of income that you're earning. So simply, you can say that MPC is how much? It is the 2,000 additional consumption divided by 5000 additional income which comes out to be 0.4 or 40 percent means that your marginal propensity to consume is 40 percent 40 percent is the amount of additional expenditure that you do out of your additional earnings Right now, this is a very realistic way in which we can calculate even our daily budgets, our monthly and annual budgets, and even the countries and economies also work very closely with this principle of propensity to consume so that they can find out what is the kind of consumption behavior, what is the kind of consumption expenditure in an economy. So, I hope that these points are clear to you and I hope that propensity to consume is clear to you all. I'll see you next time with another important term. Till then, stay tuned to Ecoholics.